Okay, uh, so our next challenge, the next one we are going to discuss is enabling the smart edge and quantum technology components. Again, uh, we have several presenters. Uh, we have Samira Nick from uh, ASME. She is going to talk about the call uh, on smart edge and quantum technologies. We have also Christian uh, Trevziger from DigiConnect. We will discuss briefly the quantum technology flagship. And we have Marco Ciccarelli from DigiConnect. who will talk about chips joint undertaking. So uh, Samira, who is going to start? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I will start just briefly and then I will pass the. Peace. Thank you so much, Roman. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this uh, uh, presentation to learn a little bit more about the challenge we identify for smart edge and also the quantum technologies. So um, I will. Uh, um, I would like to just tell you that because there is a very relevant initiatives that are happening in the European Commission now, uh, related to these topics, I invited my colleagues from DigiConnect to give an overview uh, specifically about the CHIPS Act. And uh, uh, my uh, colleague Marco Cesarelli will talk about the CHIPS for uh, Europe uh, initiative, uh, which, as you know, it was uh, launched uh, at the end of last year. And then I will talk about the, uh, the relevant uh, challenge, which is enabling the smart edge. Uh, and then after that, I will ask my colleague uh, Christian Trevsker from DigiConnect to talk about quantum chips uh, under the Chips Act, and also he's uh, he has a very great overview of the uh, quantum flagship. So, and then in relation to that, I will talk about the emerging quantum technology components part of this challenge. So, uh, I would like to invite Marco to start with the overview of the Chips Act, and then we move on. Thank you. Good morning. Um, thank, thank you, Samira. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, briefly the CHIPS Act and particularly focusing on the CHIPS for Europe initiative, uh, which is, uh, as you, as uh, Samira mentioned, um, a new regulation that we have uh, adopted at the end of last year, which was proposed by the Commission in uh, 22. If you want to show the first slide, uh, Samira. Um, what is the, first of all, what is the rationale for this um, regulatory intervention is that uh, the whole world realized uh, because of the chips shortage that uh, uh, followed the pandemic uh, that uh, semiconductors was uh, an essential uh, enabling sector uh, on, on which uh, many uh, downstream industries uh, uh, depend. Uh, of course, uh, you may remember uh, cars are missing, uh, chips may maybe even simple chips could not be produced. Um, and uh, this combined with the um, growth uh, that is uh, ongoing uh, in terms of the uh, uh, number of chips deployed in any type of application in view of the digital transformation. Combined also with, uh, unfortunately, uh, a geopolitical uh, situation we, where we have several frictions uh, uh, across the world, uh, this, uh, because of the complexity of the supply chain, this determined a situation where uh, we are exposed because of our vulnerabilities, of our dependencies, to uh, risk of shortages. So in, in this sector, um, um, semiconductors, it was felt that it was a need for intervention, for public support, for R&D and I, and also for a proper European industrial policy. Indeed, President von der Leyen, in her uh, State of uh, the Union speech in 21, uh, introduced the concept of the European Chips Act. Uh, to support our competitiveness and, and sovereignty. Um, so the CHIPS Act uh, indeed um, was uh, uh, then in, uh, proposed by the Commission in February 22 with the objective to mobilize by 2030 over 43 uh, euros in public investments aiming to double uh, the European uh, global market share. 
Uh, this, of course, is done in collaboration with uh, uh, all the key uh, stakeholders, a number of actors within the union, and also international actors, as, uh, as you may have heard from the news. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the CHIPS Act is organized in, in three pillars. Um, the first pillar is particularly focusing on research and innovation. Uh, we call it the CHIPS for Europe initiative and it aims at developing infrastructure um, in, uh, in synergy with other uh, research program to, uh, to support uh, um, innovation, um, which is also, uh, you've heard that the, the uh, EIC is focusing on supporting, uh, you know, moving innovation um, from research to, to the market, and also this is the objective of, uh, of this initiative. Particularly, uh, there is also uh, one objective that is to support the startups and SMEs, which we will focus on the next slide. Um, this comes with uh, a total of uh, 6 billion funding from the union and from uh, member states. Uh, pillar two is about uh, uh, manufacturing, essentially, to ensure security of uh, supply of chips. And uh, we introduce a concept uh, uh, of um, First of a kind uh, within the union that would enable um, member states to um, offer uh, financial support to uh, new projects for uh, production facilities. And then pillar three is about monitoring the supply chain and uh, providing together with the member states uh, uh, response mechanisms to a situation of crisis. And uh, the CHIPS Act, as I mentioned, entered into force in uh, 21st of September, and we are now busy with the implementation. As we can see in the next slide, uh, the CHIPS uh, for Europe initiative is structured in, two, in, uh, in five objectives. We have uh, the first objective is uh, uh, the development of a cloud-based virtual design platform to support uh, particularly uh, startups and SMEs to uh, design their, uh, their, their chips. Uh, the second one is to um, develop uh, uh, or further expand the pilot lines uh, to support uh, prototyping uh, based on uh, innovative uh, technologies, semiconductor technologies. And the third one is to accelerate the development of quantum chips through, uh, again, uh, design tools, as well as with uh, uh, pilot lines for prototyping. Uh, the fourth one is uh, focusing on, uh, on skills and competences. Uh, we will develop a network of competence center with uh, a competence center in each state of the union. And uh, the fifth one is to facilitate access to equity and loans uh, through a dedicated uh, instrument that we call the CHIPS Fund. Uh, so essentially, this is the overview um, of the different instruments. Uh, the first four are implemented through the CHIPS joint undertaking. The last one, as we will see, is implemented also with, uh, uh, with the support of the EIC. Uh, so in the next slide, we see indeed um, a graphic representation of the Chiefs for Europe initiative, where we have uh, design platform and pilot lines and being accessed by users. Uh, users can get support in terms of uh, uh, through the competence centers um, for uh, training and technical support, and particularly from the financial uh, support. Um, we have uh, the Chiefs Fund uh, you see on the top left side. Uh, next slide, we will see in particular the CHIPS Fund. This, um, the reason for creating such a fund is, I think, is absolutely clear, particularly to, uh, to the participants that uh, we know that uh, uh, in the past we have uh, supported uh, NDNI through our funding instruments such as uh, Horizon Europe. Uh, but uh, this uh, is, in many cases, not uh, suitable for the needs of deep tech uh, semiconductor startups. Uh, the, the semiconductor is a very capital intensive uh, uh, sector, 
and and you need to have efficient capital uh, to look at uh, you know revenues in the come uh, in the long term. For this reason, we introduce the concept of the chief fund, which is actually implemented through the two main uh, facilities that we have. Uh, to support uh, um, SMEs in, uh, in the Union. One is indeed uh, the European Innovation Council, particularly with the accelerator program. And then uh, we have this uh, challenge on uh, semiconductor and quantum chips. And the other one is InvestEU. Uh, we will see in the next slide what is, roughly speaking, the main difference between these uh, two parts. Um, well, this is just a, a graphic representation to show that uh, uh, for the innovative startups and deep tech uh, SMEs, we have uh, uh, the EAC accelerator with uh, equity, which is also blended, as, as you know, with, uh, with grants. Um, and uh, we, uh, uh, we also have InvestEU, which is uh, uh, looking at also at uh, more mature uh, technologies or uh, a larger scale of business uh, where applicable so it covers uh, uh, also with uh, the, the needs of those companies with uh, equity quasi equity and also the EIB is uh, is uh, in the invest you program offering uh, loans to certain uh, uh, companies that are bank at a later stage um, and then, uh, just to uh, summarize now uh, in the last slide, what we see as, uh, uh, as a rationale for proposing this specific uh, topic in the context of this uh, challenge on a semiconductor is uh, we see, for instance, in the Chips Act, we, um, we have an accompanying document that we published, which is the staff working document of the Chips Act, which also describes technology drivers and future opportunities. Among those, uh, we recognize that edge computing is a, a, a relevant one, as well as artificial intelligence, security, and sustainability. These are uh, some of the relevant growth drivers that we see for European companies. Um, as, uh, as we know, um, in general, um, we have uh, a, a number of uh, 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 in relevant uh, um, components uh, for um, for digital applications uh, in the clouds or um, for um, processors, uh, AI accelerators that uh, are produced by uh, large enterprises such as uh, Nvidia, Intel, and, and so on, uh, where. Um, uh, Startups, European startups uh, would uh, um, find it very hard to challenge those incumbents. Whereas on the edge, we see that there are uh, trends that uh, offer new opportunities for uh, for startups, for uh, European SMEs, such as, for instance, domain-specific architectures, where you uh, have uh, uh, the possibility to address specific needs of uh, of certain applications. So on the right side, you see some examples of uh, the applications that we want to uh, target with the concept of the smart edge. And we see that this actually is an important opportunity for uh, European uh, semiconductor startups and SMEs that we want to support through this challenge. So we're back to you, Samira. Thank you so much, Marco, for this uh, very nice introduction to the CHIPS Act. So, um, now I will uh, explain the part A of this challenge that is dedicated to enabling the smart edge. So um, just to give you a background and the scope of this challenge, as you know, the concept of a smart edge recognizes the limitation and challenges that uh, we have when we rely only on the centralized cloud-based processing. We know that uh, uh, there are no, now so many applications that we need a lot of fast uh, calculations and fast processing that should happen closer to the data source. And uh, Smart Edge can offer these by several advantages. For instance, we have 
real-time processing uh, at the edge so we don't have to have uh, lengthy uh, decision makings uh, and also we, it will uh, um, um, improve the security aspects that I will explain a little bit more. So uh, it's it's a very beneficial to uh, use the benefit of smart edge for uh, having uh, immediate responses and actions in many different applications. Um, so um, the new generation of these devices that are going to work on these kind of processing at smart edge uh, uh, devices that are going to run these innovative uh, um, uh, um, calculations and processing need to also be uh, adaptable to our other values and goals like having lower power processing and lower power sensing and communication. We would like to have them adaptable to the new uh, area of sustainable electronic devices that uh, we are adopting in different applications. So uh, it's important to consider that uh, this um, challenge is looking into new, new innovative ideas for a smart edge that is looking into the, uh, the um, the, like the holistic view of how to adopt these uh, devices into these uh, new um, uh, technological revolutions. So smart edge can uh, greatly contribute to bandwidth optimization, for instance, which is particularly important for uh, scenarios where the network connectivity is limited or expensive. So we can focus and improve that in Europe. Uh, it enhances privacy and security by keeping sensitive data locally. We don't have to go to clouds that are currently not even European clouds. And reducing the exposure of data during transmission, uh, which cause better security and also real-time decision-making uh, that is re relying on a cloud connectivity uh, uh, than the re remote servers. If we look into the global market of edge computing, just out of edge, uh, smart edge, I just focus here just on one of the components, which is edge, edge uh, computing, you can see that it's going to uh, increase very vastly from 53.6 billion last year to 111.3 billion in 2024, eight in four years, let's say. So the growth per year is supposed to be 15.7%. It's a huge market and we are here only touching the computing market. There are so many other aspects that uh, this technology can uh, uh, look uh, um, into. And as you can see uh, in this color coding, Europe is blue, Europe is there, but it's not the, the you know, the top, uh, you see that there is a still a, a big competition with uh, Asia Pacific and also North America. So uh, we have to make sure that we will push and support European startups in this domain. So the specific objectives that we have in mind is promote the development of novel semiconductor components and integrated smart systems for next generation of smart edge devices with uh, significant impact. And we are focusing on development of storage uh, devices um, that are relying on the system approach or in one of the key components or technological areas uh, that I will mention uh, in the next couple of slides. One of them is edge processing. So we would like to have a design and integration of edge processors that minimize energy computation uh, uh, consumption and also enable real time decisions. So uh, we would like to have low and ultra low power processors, open source processor cores, embedded systems and chip processors, AI accelerators, and so on. You can uh, see all the details and examples in the uh, work program. Uh, another one can be processors that will require uh, low latency, non-volatile uh, memory for local data storage, uh, because it will allow higher efficiency in memory computing and allowing uh, uh, analog computing. It will improve security uh, as a critical um, uh, element of uh, cryptographic accelerators and hardware modules. Another aspect that this um, your proposal can focus on is edge sensing that will include the design and integration of components for data acquisition it can be optical sensors lasers uh, laders ra uh, sorry laders radars and uh, sensing biosensing environmental sensing, sensing um, chemical sensing uh, mems and so many for sensing we have a vast uh, uh, application area and you can focus on them and uh, what 
make sure that you're focusing on the design and integration of these components. Another one is edge communication. We are looking into covering the design and integration of communication technologies on chips for uh, edge devices. It can be for uh, 5G or 6G wireless, com wireless communication, low power uh, wireless communication, optical connectivity, uh, mesh networking, software defined networking, security protocols for edge and uh, IoT applications. So again, for communication, there are so many areas that you can look into and uh, just make sure that you are looking into a better integration and design and connectivity of these technologies for chip uh, and on chip for edge uh, devices. Another category that you can cover is edge power management. So we are looking into, again, design and integration of components that are efficient manage in managing and utilities of power. So we are looking for, uh, for instance, especially for those that are based on bandwidth materials. So it can include for solutions for dynamic power management, sleep more operations, battery optimization, energy harvesting for sustainable uh, and autonomous operation. So here also you have a huge number of choices uh, to improve power consumption and utilization of power for different application areas. Another category is integrated smart edge devices. Here we are referring to highly integrated customized edge devices based on system on chip integration, system in package integration, heterogeneous integration, and molecular design of components. For instance, it can be chiplets, uh, for integration into customized edge devices through advanced packaging and technologies, uh, including like uh, two and a half D or three uh, D packaging, enabling improvements in device uh, uh, miniaturization and also performance and uh, reliability. You can also find more examples in the the, uh, the work program about this uh, category, which is one of the uh, very important categories, of course, to focus on. And uh, just I finish these categories, I would like to say that um, uh, some of the relevant, um, uh, let's say, examples of integration chips that you can look into is also smart cameras, wearables, hearing aids, uh, industrial auto, uh, automations, AR, VR gears, uh, 5G, uh, 6G base stations, and autonomous vehicles. So. The number of uh, areas that you can focus on, as I, I explained, there are like at least five that we identified in the in the in the work program, and the application areas and the integrate for integrated chips are so many, and you can look into them and make sure that you will uh, have your proposals with a great demonstration of high potential for commercial deployment in Europe. We are really looking into have the European industry uh, uh, in front of uh, this uh, new wave, and we would like to make sure that your opinion, your innovation, has an, a, a, a very a good and huge impact on industrial automation, information and communication, mobility, health and well-being, uh, agri-food security, and energy. So uh, please have it in mind and make sure your proposal demonstrates the effect that you will have in these sectors. So some of the expected outcomes and impacts, uh, we would like to make sure that the next generation of edge and IoT semiconductor uh, chip devices will have an important, uh, uh, have an impact on the smart edge on different areas. For instance, it includes industrial optimization, uh, making sure that real uh, time monitoring of machinery is happening and we can make uh, decisions very fast. Uh, and uh, we make sure that uh, we have predictive uh, uh, maintenance, real-time monitoring, and so on. For mobility, uh, as you know, we want to make sure that we have intelligence uh, uh, transport uh, systems, and also uh, there are so many new uh, services and modules that can be uh, used and improved in this uh, sector. Um, for smart cities, for instance, enabling real-time monitoring of tra uh, tra traffic, energy usage, air quality, and so on. Again, there are many more examples in the work program that you can check. Another uh, uh, expected impacts can be on health and well-being sector, uh, making sure that we enable remote patient uh, uh, monitoring, personalized treatments, and so on. 
uh, for agri-food uh, and agriculture, we can look into efficient, sustainable, uh, uh, one enabling pre um, precise farming technologies to increase, like for instance, uh, uh, crop yield and so on. Uh, environmental monitoring is another area that we can focus on to improve uh, uh, resource management, early warning systems, and uh, for natural disasters and so on. So there are so many areas that you can look into. Uh, there are a lot of examples in the work program that you can check and to see if your uh, innovation can connect and reflect uh, an improvement in one of these areas. So. By that, I would like to finish this part about the part A of the challenge, which is uh, about the smart edge. At the end of my presentation, after the uh, part B on quantum, I will explain about the specific eligibility criteria and the budget, because it's for the whole of the, uh, the um, this challenge um, information is for both part A and B. So now I will invite my colleague uh, Christian Trevsker to talk about the CHIPS Act for uh, Europe, uh, specifically focusing on quantum chips, and give us an overview of this initiative, and then I will explain part B. Thank you. Thank you, Samira. Um, I hope the sound is good. So just let me know if in case it is not good. Um, my name is Christian Trebsker. I'm a policy officer in the Quantum Technology Unit of DigiConnect. And I have the pleasure to give you a little bit of introduction on the quantum uh, challenge uh, to frame where the challenge enters. So next slide, please. First of all, uh, what is the vision that we have for quantum technologies in Europe. So we want Europe to become the world's quantum valley. And this vision comes directly from our Commissioner Breton. And for this, we uh, are of course investing in research and industrialization. So we continue to invest in research and industrialization of quantum technologies for which talents like yours that you're listening to us are extremely important. This leads to scale up and strengthen the ecosystem in the European Union, which is already uh, uh, the case. So we would like to uh, strengthen the supply and the demand side of quantum technologies, which leads to create a lead market. We are uh, uh, leading, uh, creating this lead market by deploying big infrastructures that you will see in a minute and uh, by fostering the take up of quantum technologies by the public and private users. In turn, uh, we also are focusing in uh, targeted international cooperation with strategic partners uh, that can benefit the European Union interest and uh, to strengthen the coordination with uh, the member states even further. Next slide. So, uh, what are the initiatives that we have put in place to build the quantum ecosystem in Europe? So all, uh, let's say there is a central initiative that is called the quantum flagship. You may uh, know about it. It was launched in 2018 with an expected duration of 10 years and a budget of 1 billion euros. So the flagship is structured in four application areas that you see here centrally quantum communication, quantum computing, quantum simulation, and uh, sensing and metrology, to which also the challenge that will be presented by uh, Samira is uh, to some extent uh, uh, focusing also. And we also have basic science in the quantum flagship. Around it, you see all different initiatives. Let me start from the top left, uh, which is uh, the EIC, essentially. We have equity investment and support to startup. We have 300 million euros together with the semiconductor sector. Just below it, you see the EuroQCI, which is the quantum communication infrastructure. So we are deploying uh, uh, an infrastructure across the European Union based on quantum technologies. Uh, and we have 700 million euros in IRIS 2. Um, 
Just below it, we have the Euro HPC joint undertaking, so high performance computing, that is deploying quantum computers in the European Union. Here we have three to 400 million euros. And if we jump on the right hand side, on the top right, you see the space gravimetry, which is a new initiative similar to the deployment of infrastructure that uh, I've mentioned before. But this time here is focused on uh, the sensing and meteorology uh, application area of the flagship. And finally, on the bottom right, we have uh, the CHIPS Act, with which we have about 400, between four and 500 million euros to deploy pilot lines in uh, quantum technologies. So these are pre-industrial production lines of quantum technologies component. Uh, next slide. So the question is, why are we doing this? So why are we putting so much effort into quantum technologies? Well. Because uh, all market predictions that we are seeing uh, foresee an exponential growth in uh, the market of quantum technologies. And here centrally, you see uh, uh, the evolution of the uh, quantum computing uh, uh, market forecast in the, in the coming years, which is going to be a, a multi-billion euros market. And uh, you see also that uh, uh, North America, which is the light blue uh, bar, is comparable to uh, the European market, which is uh, the blue bar. Um, so our, the idea that we have is that we would like to lead the market and not to be just a market. And uh, similarly, we have uh, uh, similar exponential growth also for the other uh, three application areas, which are quantum communication, simulation, metrology, and sensing. Uh, next slide, please. So this, uh, let me return now to the CHIPS Act. Uh, and this slide shows you, let's say, the high diversity that we have of quantum chips in the European Union and the expertise that we have in the European Union on these quantum chips. Um, these are just a few examples. Let me start on the uh, top left. You see a superconducting qubit. Just below it, you see a photonic integrated circuit, very important for the communication aspects, in particular for the BB84 uh, communication protocol. On the right hand side of it, you see ND centers. So you see a one centimeter size uh, diamond that is produced in the European Union. And uh, below it, you see uh, silicon uh, spin qubits. And if we go on the top uh, right hand side, we see uh, uh, trapped ions, and in particular, the chip ion trap that is used for quantum computing. All this to show you that quantum chips are real, they do exist. We have a, a, a good expertise in the European Union. And the message that I would like to put forward is the fact that it is very difficult to make a single pilot line to produce all these chips. So the ideas that we have in mind is to have different pilot lines for the production of this uh, type of chips. Next slide, please. So, here is a summary of the maturity and the challenges of quantum technologies per pillar that you see communication, computing, simulation, sensing, and metrology, and uh, per technology platform that we have identified for uh, as potential uh, pilot lines for the pre-industrial production of quantum technologies component. So you see on the left-hand side, superconducting, photonics, trapped ions, semiconducting, and diamonds that we have already identified as being uh, uh, good in the European Union. And you see some colors as the technology maturity. Low is red, medium is yellow, and you see high is green. So uh, in respective of the wording that is here, what I would like you to concentrate on is on the green. So per line per superconducting photonics, trapped ions, semiconducting and diamonds, there is at least one uh, uh, green spot, meaning that the technology maturity is, is high and ready for the industrialization of, uh, of, the, of the pilot line, except maybe for the semiconducting that needs a little bit more um, development before uh, being able to fully deploy it in an industrial context. Uh, next uh, slide, please. And this will be my last slide. So let me dedicate a few minutes 
to uh, uh, explain what is the roadmap that we have in mind for the deployment of pilot lines in the CHIPS Act, in the quantum, uh, in the CHIPS for Europe initiative. So let me start with uh, the boundary conditions in this uh, in this roadmap. So the first one is on the top, which is the phase R and D, so research and uh, development, where we have the flagship. So here we have already experimental pilot lines, but these, uh, let me stress it, are experimental. So they do focus on uh, high flexibility and low volume of productions, and we will keep it this way. The other boundary condition is on the very far right hand side, which is the production of uh, the first generation of mass production of quantum technologies component. At this stage, the community does not need mass production, so we leave it for beyond the CHIPS Act. And what is left is the uh, uh, green arrow and the yellow arrow in between is the CHIPS Act. Essentially, we are focusing on pilot lines for uh, the production of stable quantum technologies component. And by stable, we mean high yield. So a very uh, uh, stable production of quantum technologies component. And here we have it in two phases. So stage one and stage two, uh, 2025 and then 2027. The first stage is uh, again subdivided into a ramp up phase and to a scale up of the uh, production and stabilization of the lines. And the second stage is very similar. And again, we will focus first on the very, the most mature use cases uh, to stabilize the production of, uh, of uh, quantum technologies components. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Christian, uh, for this very good introduction. So uh, now I will move to, uh, second part of uh, this uh, challenge, which is dedicated to emerging quantum technology components. So uh, just to give you a background, uh, we are focusing really on fostering innovation in quantum technologies uh, for information processing components in this challenge. And, uh, uh, you know, just just you just heard from Christian that Europe is really actually a global leader in research and development on quantum technologies, but we really have to also make sure that these um, innovative ideas can reach the market. And then most of uh, uh, all, we have to support our startups to, um, uh, that are struggling to set the necessary funding for scale up. And uh, this is very important in many uh, aspects, especially for development of hardware components uh, 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 for quantum technologies. It will actually give a very strong point to European technologies in the market for severity and also uh, transmission in, uh, transition of innovation from lab to fab. So we really focus uh, on this part because it is an accelerator on the startups and SMEs who are focusing on uh, building uh, quantum technology components and trying to help them to get to the market. And um, as you know that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, and the quantum technologies uh, have uh, uh, really can have uh, significant effects on the entire uh, European uh, economy because uh, they will um, they have uh, the capability to increase the strength of innovation and engineering in Europe uh, in many uh, different application areas and new products and business models. And uh, um, it can be, uh, as you know, uh, all it can be in uh, the aerospace, in uh, uh, pharma, in medtech, in defense, in security, uh, uh, finance, and so many other applications. And um, this is very important to make sure that Europe is playing a, a leading role uh, because the market is expected to grow from 1.7 uh, billion in, uh, three years ago to 94 billion in uh, six years. So uh, we have to make sure that Europe has a strong uh, leading position in this area. Uh, so this um, particularly this uh, um, challenge is focusing on the development of three emerging technologies. First, fault tolerance quantum computing hardware components. Because you know that we already have a lot of components, uh, uh, hardware components that are, uh, as uh, Christian built, uh, mentioned, in, built in European labs in different uh, areas, in different with different technologies. But at the same time, we are still 
uh, lacking the, uh, um, the good and solid hardware that are suitable for uh, basically showing us the benefit of quantum uh, over the classical systems we have. And we have to make sure that we, can, we find solutions for scalability and for the performance of these devices. The second part of this uh, challenge is focusing on uh, uh, quantum sensors. You know, quantum sensors have a variety of applications in many different areas, specifically medtech, uh, uh, um, metrology, uh, and also defense and security. It's very important. And uh, they are, um, there are many uh, different innovations, but at the same time, as you know, most of them are uh, just functioning in uh, tightly controlled environments and only lab uh, uh, environments. And it's very important to make sure that we will have uh, application uh, sensors that are uh, really usable in applied areas and environments. The third part is focusing on quantum communication. As you know, it's very crucial for ultra safe communication. Quantum communication is a very key component that um, European uh, Union should make sure that have a say in that and make sure that we have uh, uh, the elements and products that are needed for a scale up of these products uh, because it will really uh, help um, Europe to have a say in this, let's say, uh, trusted based quantum technology that is created in Europe. So uh, these are all very important uh, areas that we are focusing on this uh, challenge and the objective specifically if you want to focus into is uh, for these three sectors. The first one, full, uh, the, we are looking into creating full stack fault tolerance quantum compu uh, 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 computing with improving the performance um, simplifying significantly the quantum processing units uh, to have a better inter, uh, uh, action and integration with uh, control electronics, uh, looking into scalable control systems. Uh, so we make sure that we can have a scale up of thousands of qubits if needed, which are needed for the meaningful calculations to have this quantum benefits, and also we need software development, the software for quantum software for controlling these uh, uh, processing uh, systems and also for uh, um, uh, error correction and so on. Another part that is uh, we are focusing on, as I mentioned, was quantum sensing. Now we really would like to look into quantum sen sensor components that can function in real and harsh environments in various application areas. For instance, we are looking in uh, echo uh, uh, toxicology, uh, pharmaceuticals, biomedicals, space, uh, corrosion detection, uh, medical imaging, automotives, and so on. Um, you can also find a lot of more details in the work program. And the last but not least is the quantum communication devices, which has really strategic importance. Uh, and we are looking into uh, quantum um, components for communication that can function in real environments, for instance, for quantum repeaters and uh, 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 devices that can be based on, uh, uh, that can be used for quantum based encryption. So these are the topics that are uh, really uh, uh, the main core of this part of the challenge that we would like to focus. And we are expecting to have um, very, to have uh, uh, basically um, Europe as a leading um, um, uh, continent for development of cutting edge quantum components and solutions. As Christian mentioned, we would like to have the quantum valley, Europe as the quantum valley. So we have to really make sure that uh, we are helping to move forward quantum computing and simulation, quantum sensing and communication that can be used and deployed in different areas and uh, application uh, areas. This also has an, uh, an eye on the, in long term, uh, on the other goals of the European Union about the uh, digital development. We are looking into making sure that uh, quantum technologies will help the economic uh, resilience and digital sovereignty of the European Union. And also it's, uh, like, um, it has like, the quantum capability quantum capabilities of Europe by 2030 uh, will uh, really be envisaged by the uh, 2030 um, digital compass uh, of the European Union, uh, uh, which you can read and uh, know more about these policies uh, on uh, this specific dedicated component. 
So uh, for the most challenges, I would like to talk about the specific conditions. There might be a slight difference between part A and part B. I really encourage you to read the work program uh, very carefully. I highlight the most important components, but if you apply for part and A or part B, make sure that you really know what is applied to each specific part. So any challenge, any technology that is actually uh, identified and developed on this, this challenge must be in a robust manner, paying attention to specific uh, uh, areas like safety, security, and ethics for future applications. And also another important uh, uh, aspect to look into is that the outcomes of safeguard that should have an eye on the safeguard of the European uh, Union strategic assets, interest, autonomy, and security. And it is very important to avoid the situation of technological dependency to an on, uh, to a non-EU source. So we would like to encourage you to look into your innovations in a way that we can um, make sure that there are no strategic weaknesses and uh, vulnerabilities for a uh, European Union uh, when looking into these uh, uh, innovation areas. And we make sure that we, your innovation uh, uh, is helping Europe to be as autonomous and independent as possible. Um, of course, the beneficiaries of these grants of uh, are they must not directly or indirectly be controlled by a non-associated third country or a legal entity established in a non-associated third country because all of this is under chips act the funding is uh, allocated to the chips act and we have to make sure that we follow the same rules and um, this is very important to know that the, in case of an investment if it's happening if you get a, a, the equity parts then the European Investment Bank also does the due diligence and they look into uh, the safeguards that are introduced uh, for this uh, investment agreement. So you have to make sure that all in all, you follow these rules before and after the application. About the budget, the indicative budget is uh, 50 million. And as you see, we have two parts. Uh, so the decision is that at least 30% of this budget will be allocated to part A, uh, to Smart Edge, and 30% uh, to quantum technology components. And then the remaining part, uh, the 40%, will be shared equally with or depends on the number of applications on uh, the different uh, um, part A, A or B. So by that, I would like to thank you, and I hope you wrote your uh, questions in the slider or you have any questions in the chat. Uh, I've been listening to that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Samira. Uh, since uh, we're slightly behind schedule, uh, I mean, there, there are two questions which maybe we can ask and you can answer quickly, and then we'll move to the next one. Uh, Johannes? Indeed, because both of the questions you have been already answered during your presentation but maybe good to underline there was one on the type type of semiconductor technologies sensors chips new semiconductor materials and etc that are eligible in smart edge and quantum challenge again i think you have been answered this but maybe if you could yeah repeat it yeah so uh for the smart edge as is mentioned it can be any kind of uh, uh, those five categories that are mentioned, uh, you can really see the details and a lot of examples actually in the in the challenge text. So I encourage you to look into them. I don't repeat them again. And for quantum, it's mentioned the three categories, uh, quantum processing components uh, for fault tolerance, quantum computing. We have quantum sensing and quantum communication. And then there's a question uh, on the topic that you just explained five minutes ago on quantum being a critical technology for the European Union. The question is, can we um, attach non-EU investors if we get selected for the challenge? Um, this is uh, maybe also Giovanni can help in that because when usually when we have the uh, during the interview, the jury is very uh, keen on knowing what is the uh, biggest share of control of your startup. We have to make sure that uh, we don't have the non 
let's say, uh, non-associated countries having the larger share of, like, for instance, China or Russia, uh, of your uh, investment. So, but Giovanni, please. Thank you, Samira. No, you, you answer uh, very well. Uh, exactly. During the interview, in the interview stage, I'm feeling it's always the best moment to clarify with your applicant, with the applicants, all these aspects. So specific questions will be asked. And of course, uh, I think we need to avoid that uh, a company funded by DAC is then controlled uh, um, by, let's say, an entity which is not established in the EU or an associated country. So these questions will be asked. I don't think there is an issue in having a share owned by, you know, uh, an investor which is not coming from. Um, it's all about the uh, will always be analyzed on a case by case basis. It's all about the uh, the control of the company, the share, how big the share is, and so on. Okay. It's not a blocking factor, but it it will be scrutinized, okay. and also during the due diligence. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you. you. And then there is a last question just coming in: Is X-ray and similar sensors part of uh, photonics? Yes, but we should make sure that there is an innovative and new technology behind that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's basically the the main goal of EIC to make sure that we're looking into new uh, uh, applications or new innovations. Mm 